So now that we have a good understanding of what comprises the nervous system, specifically in regards to its overall structure and its overall functions, we're going to now be getting a little bit deeper in our understanding of this system. And in order to understand the title of this lecture, which is Action Potentials, we have to understand the nervous system from a functional unit perspective. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next couple of videos. We'll entitle this next flowchart Neuron 1. And here I want you to take a look at figure 48.2, which gives a good structural and functional overview of the neuron. The neuron, as we'll begin with this sort of introduction here, is, like I said, the basic functional unit of the nervous system. So whenever you have a system, it will have almost always some sort of a unit that is the most functional, the most basic unit that comprises the entire system. And the neuron is the case the, for the nervous system. In this case, it's the neuron. Basic functional unit of NS for nervous system. So the peripheral nervous system contains neurons, the central nervous system contains neurons, the brain, spinal cord, rest of the body, all of that. Neurons will be involved in that overall nervous system. Now, in terms of its function, because it is the basic functional unit, what can we understand, broadly speaking for right now, what the neuron really does? And its job is pretty simple. The neuron's job is to conduct. And in this term, what we're stating is that there's going to be a message that needs to be relayed, a message that needs to move. And that movement of a message is called conduction when we're talking about a nervous system. So this idea of conduction will be specifically in regards to some sort of message that needs to be sent to the body. But we're talking about a nervous message, a neural message, not an endocrine message like a hormone. This is a different type of message as we'll see. So this job of the neuron is to conduct the messages and now specifically it's not going to be via chemical signals like the hormones but now we're going to use something faster actually, something called electrical signals. Neurons function as messengers or conduct, they function as the conductors of messages that move via electrical signals which is a big difference than the endocrine system that we saw earlier um, in the course. In addition to this conduction function, they will also be involved in the idea of integration. They will also integrate the message. The term integrate is going to be elaborated on a little bit later when we talk about the idea of interneurons in the overall structure of the nervous system. Now, moving forward, now that we have the basic function of, the ner of a neuron, which would be to conduct and integrate messages, electrical signals specifically, um, we can also state that a neuron will have and possess a variety of shapes and sizes. Variety of shapes plus sizes, um, depending on the specific function. So sometimes you may want a neuron to have a very specific function of being a fast relaying message and other times it may be a different type of neuron that may not need to function in that fast message relaying maybe some sort of side function or separate function like integrating that's going to all depend and vary uh, the shape and size of the neuron that is seen and this shape and size is usually based off of the cell body and that's what we're going to talk about next. The neuron is often characterized by its structure. And specifically, the structure to notice here is the one that usually has a different shape and size dependent on function. And that shape and size is all surround or dependent on the type of cell body a neuron possesses. The cell body of a neuron is a very simple part of this structure. It doesn't really make the neuron special in any way because the cell body is just the location of the usual organelles that all cells have. Location of usual organelles. But what you'll notice is that this shape of the cell body, as you'll see in figure 48.2, may vary slightly here and there dependent on the neuron's function. And when we say usual organelles, if we go all the way back to bio 1 and we looked at cell biology and cell structure, what we really mean are things like the nucleus, which every cell has, 
the neuron. It's a cell, but it's a specifically a functional unit cell of the nervous system with a nucleus like every other cell, with a mitochondria like most other cells, I should say. Red blood cells don't have nuclei, but that's a little bit later in the course. Um, mitochondria will be there, Golgi's will be there, etc. You get the idea. Basic organelles will be there in the cell body. This is not the part that's really of interest to us, though it's important, of course. What's of interest to us is going to be highlighted in the next video and next flowchart on the neuron, and that's specifically going to be things that are called cytoplasmic extensions. These are going to be very specific and very characteristic of the neuron, as we'll see in the next flowchart and video.